Hey, I'm ZSH Plays. Welcome to Armadillo Adventure. Oh my god, these guys are so cute. As soon as I saw them, I knew they were going to be the first animal I did a build for in the new pack. So we are back in the Moonlight World, building a walkthrough interactive guest experience for the Nine Banded Armadillo. So I wanted to try something that I've never done before with this build, which was to build a sort of display lawn like you often see in zoos where they have ambassador animals, happy sort of meeting guests, and you can get up close and personal with them, sometimes uh, handle them depending on the, the species, etc. And armadillos are often used for that purpose. So it's gonna be quite a simple looking build, but with a few different things going on inside the, the habitat. So firstly, I'm gonna be using the guest seating, which I have literally never used before. I think I tried to, oh, using the bulldozer tool as well. That was fun. I love the fact that you can delete items that are in a group without having to go into the group. I think there was about three different groups of plants there and I've just deleted a few of them without affecting the rest of them, just from where I wanted to move the tool. So that's really cool. But yeah, get the um, guest seating in and then put an animal talk point in. And then we'll have a guest gate as well, uh, which I forgot I needed. <laughs> you can see how I never do builds like this. Um, so we put the guest gate in so that we can get guests actually into the habitat. Um, and then we'll have an animal talk point and we're gonna set it up. So this would be like a, an extra experience that you have to uh, pay for to do rather than just something anyone can wander into. That's the concept. Um, I think I'm gonna try and link it up with the new guided um, tours as well once I get my head around how they work obviously we need a path for the guests to go through and then we'll build everything around that path and then a lot of the time is going to be spent so that you can't really tell where the path starts and where the path ends so it doesn't look uh, like it does at the moment if you see what I mean but before we get onto that we need to do something about the entrance I'm not a huge fan of the guest gate, uh, the fact that there's only one to choose from, and it's this huge wooden um, sort of gate. Uh, it's, not, it's not great unless that's the actual theme you're going for. So I guess we need to embrace the, the whole being made of wood aspect. There's not much I can do about that. So I'm just gonna try and make it look a bit more attractive and make it fit the theme of this armadillo adventure. So we get a load of the wood planks in, we're going to do some lettering and just make this look like um, a proper entrance rather than just this huge gate stuck in the middle of the habitat for no reason. So I'm going to use some of White Andrew's Workshop's amazing uh, font. Um, I forget what this uh, font is called, but um, it's a really nice one. It's quite zooey looking and um, pretty modern as well, which I like. So I'm going to make a sign with this and then move it onto the, the wood paneling above the guest gate that we just put in there. Um, there are so many amazing fonts on the workshop, made by Wyatt and Ricey and people like that. Uh, I try and use them as much as possible in my builds um, just to make them look a bit more uh, interesting rather than using the in-game fonts. Um, so this is still looking pretty basic at the moment. We've got a lot more to do to it. Once we've got that sign in there, that starts to bring it to life and then we just need to bulk up this surround so it looks um, more cohesive with the guest gate itself um, so we'll get these planks into the right position we're going to copy the planks on top of each other uh, loads of times to sort of thicken them up and give the impression that they would actually be holding up this sign and are part of the gate rather than just something that's been stuck onto the gate and we'll come back to that in a second. I just want to do a little bit of work on the inside of the habitat as well and start working out how this is going to look. Sand seems to be a popular choice for these sort of display areas, uh, either sand or just some sort of scrubby grass, but the sand blends in better with the wood chippings. Um, so I'm going to start with that um, and then we'll do a bit more work on the gate till I'm happy with that. Apologies for the absolute state of my voice today, by the way, as you can probably tell, I've got a cold, um, but I'll do my best. We're going to drop one of the Moonlight World shelters in the back here so the armadillos have somewhere to go when they are not on the display uh, lawn area. Uh, and then just adjust the fence a bit so that we can get some null barriers in here. Uh, I also wanted to make a little queue for the, uh, for the front of it. Just a place where people would stand while they were waiting to go in. So we'll chuck a few pieces in and just make a sort of queue thing here. And getting back to the guest gate, one of the things I'd really like Frontier to consider 
would be if you could somehow link guest gates to animal talks so that the guest gate only opens uh, when there's an animal talk on. So with a sort of display lawn habitat like this, when the animal talk is running, it looks so good. You got the guests up in the seating. There's a few guests stood around the animal talk point, which I'm just gonna put in here. And I've put a table with food on it next to it. So it looks like it'd be a, a proper animal encounter where the armadillo would be up on the table. People could feed it, maybe hold it, etc. The issue is when there isn't an animal talk on, and you can only have like one a year, then it becomes just a standard walkthrough exhibit. And um, I don't really like the way it looks when it's a standard walkthrough exhibit because you wouldn't really have a big walkthrough with two tiny little armadillos in it. You know, there's just way more people than animals. They're only tiny. You know, they'd probably be at risk of getting stepped on. <laughs> it's not ideal. It's really designed specifically for the, the animal talk and it'd be great to be able to link those up. Uh, what I'm doing here is using decals to blur the edges between the path and the sand. I really like the uh, effect of that. Um, this is what I was saying at the start about getting the habitat to look cohesive uh, rather than the really straight edges of the paths all the way around. I'm gonna drop a forage feeder in here uh, as we do so often uh, on this channel and um, just give another little focal point for the armadillos. And then we're gonna start cluttering up the habitat with all the logs and little rocks and things like that that we need to bring it to life. A few tree stumps as well and you can see some of the new grass in there from the new update which I really like. And now we're going to build a little display table so that the armadillo could be brought up here and sort of placed on the table so that people could see him. Um, I had a sort of choice with this. Do I build a little ramp going up to the table so the armadillo in the game can, can get up there? Um, although how often will they actually do that? Probably not very often and you know it doesn't look that realistic so I decided to build it in a more realistic fashion like this and then for the cinematics uh, I am literally just going to move the armadillo up here um, and he or she can just uh, chill out on the table for the purposes of the cinematics <laughs> we'll get some railings in for the seats at the back and then start dropping some rocks in um, I don't know why I never realized this before, but it only occurred to me building this that you can use the really long rocks turned on their sides to make uh, tiny little rocks. And a lot of the reference material I was looking at for these types of habitats, loads of tiny little rocks in, so I've done that. And then this is the Moonlight World, so we're gonna put some lights in for nighttime. But the concept for this build is that because this is a, a paid experience, this would be timed at the very opening of the zoo about 5 p.m. Uh, so it would still be nice and sunny like this when you got there. Uh, the armadillos will be just waking up and uh, the guests can see them. But obviously we want some light so that the whole area isn't just completely dark at night time. And with this ramp, uh, we are pretty much done building. We just need to get some foliage in here to bring a splash of color, uh, bring the place to life. Uh, so we'll get loads of different plants scattered around and fill in the area on the outside of this display area as well. So it sits in nicely with the rest of the zoo. Uh, we'll just pass the red foxes here, um, sort of on the curve that's gonna bring us round to the Asian area of the zoo. So we'll get all of this in and that's pretty much it. Then it's time to bring in the armadillos and the educator and the guests and take a look at how it looks. Let me know in the comments what you think of this build and what you think of the Grasslands Animal Pack. I'm really looking forward to getting stuck into some more of the new animals. Um, I've done a garden for the butterflies, which I really enjoyed. It's a really unique experience having little flying animals in the zoo. Um, so check that out. Um, I'll put a link to it at the end. Um, and yeah, let's get the armadillos in and take a look at it. Thank you for watching as always, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.